Welcome everybody to the Indiana Basketball Weekly Show on the Gruley Truth Sports Network. I am your host for Indiana Basketball Weekly, Mike Goodpaster, and right now I would like to welcome in my co-host from the Florida Keys, Ken Sterling. How you doing, Kent? Kent. Kent. Hey, there you are. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what happened. Sorry there. about that. That's all right. Huh? I guess the... we could put that in the next Oops 2 book, right? <laughs> well, I, I don't know about the cell coverage down here in Key West, Florida. So yeah. I, I lost you for just a minute. Well, we know the weather is better than it is up here. But last night, oh. the Indiana Hoosiers. Yeah had a dominating 66-62 to 62 win over the Northwestern Wildcats. This game was nearly a disaster for the Wild, or for the Hoosiers, led by as many as 10 in the first half. But, of course, as they always do, they had a long scoring drought that allowed Northwestern to take the lead into the half at three. Fans were booing. Archie looked a little dumbfounded. And then they ended up winning the game at the end. What do we take away from this? Because I'm tired of hearing this. Well, at least they won. Well, you know what, at, at least and here's kind of the thing where you can look at Indiana in two ways, as we always can. Uh, number one, it sounded like Archie Miller understands that uh, he needs to shrink the rotation. That's what he said in the postgame press conference, that maybe it's just going to be five guys, that he doesn't think that 11 guys are ready to play every night, and so they shouldn't play every night, which is a good thing ultimately. But as we look at Indiana, you know, it, it, it's hard to fathom that it took him, what, 15 games to figure this out. Uh, of course that's the case. Uh, an 11-person rotation on that team is absolutely ridiculous and why it took this kind of – this length of time to figure that out. I just can't – I can't understand. Yeah, because this is not a deep, talent-rich team. No. This is a team that has six or seven really good players. That's about it. Trace Jackson Davis and Justin Smith were the saviors last night. You know, they were, and, and thank God for those guys. They were both 7 of uh, 11 from the field. The rest of the team was 6 of 32 from the field. They were 23 of, of 30 from the line, which is fine and good, and it's good that they were because otherwise maybe instead of being down 10 in the second half, they'd have been down 14, and all of a sudden it's it's you have a different kind of psychology and mindset about the game. So, you know, the, those two guys really stood up. They played. I thought Al Durham played reasonably well. But this is not a team that functions well together for long stretches of time. And they're going to come up against Ohio State on Saturday, and God help them, because Ohio State's lost three in a row, and they're going to come in ang angry. Or maybe they're going to come in not as good as we thought they were a month ago. You never know. It could be either way. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we, but – like, Let's look on the bright side, They don't Ken. lose four in a row often. Yeah, yeah we, but... we, you can look at it any number of ways, but I don't think they're going to be happy coming in there. And if I'm in Indiana, I'm making sure that the first five minutes of that game, I'm ready to compete. Yeah, but the problem is, last night, the first five minutes, they looked ready to compete. It was the rest of the time that they didn't until the last five minutes. They shot just 37% for the field as a team. Luckily, they didn't have the issues at the free throw line that they had in the past, or they'd have lost this game. They shot 76.7% .7 from the free throw line. It made 15 free throws in the second half, which helped push them over the hump. Yeah, you just can't. You can't play at the level they did last night and hope to win games in the Big Ten against anybody but Northwestern at any other facility than Simon Scott Assembly Hall. You know, it's it's just that simple for Indiana. And if they don't if they don't bring it uh, on Saturday, we we got big problems. And and there's really only there's only one game you look at over the next seven or so and think, okay, we got a good chance to win that one, and that's at Nebraska. And I don't think that that's going to be easy. No. Well, this team will make sure it's not one way or the other. Um, I, I think one thing that was good is you had an upperclassman that stepped up. And even if you if you look at the stat line, Al Durham didn't play that well. But I think his aggression on offense and the intensity on defense was a welcome sight for a team who needs veteran leadership to step to the forefront. And they really do need that leadership. And and I liked what Archie had to say in the post-game press conference about the leadership and about the rotation. And, I mean, it's about damn time he said it. But, you know, it's it's time for some of those guys to figure out what the hell they want to do with their lives and where they want to play basketball. And if it's at Indiana, 
you, you've got to pony up a little bit and, and you have to show some want to and some collective energy instead of individual energy. And if they're not willing to do that, then move the hell on and, and get on the next bus out of town and respect what this thing is or or just stop. You know, and, and I don't know why it took this long for Archie to come with that message, but that it can't, I guess, better late than never, right? I guess. Um, Devontae Green, I hate to beat a dead horse, but he scored one point. He was yeah. 0 for 6 from the field, 1 for 2 from the free throw line. He had a plus minus of negative 13 in 20 minutes, Ken. Yeah, and normally I'm not a big guy with plus minus. You know, I, I think that it can be a misleading statistic. Me too, but the but minus 13 night, stands out. Yeah, it's totally appropriate to look at that and, and see that as Devontae Green's contribution to the whole. Um, you know, which was really negative. And, and that's what you get. You know, you, you get that from him. There are games that he's going to win with his shooting, and then there are four games for every game he's going to win with his shooting that he's going to lose for you or put you on the precipice of doom, and that's what he did last night again. Yeah, and next up they have Ohio State, as you said. Yeah. Ohio State's actually behind IU in this Big Ten standings. and. Yeah. This is a team, though, that had impressive non-conference victories over Villanova, North Carolina, and Kentucky, which I applaud them for, anybody that beats Kentucky. <laughs> they were ranked as high as number two in the overall rankings, but their offense suddenly is sloppy and cold and looks like Indiana. You know, it's, it, college basketball is such a funky game, right? And, and Dan Dockich said this on Twitter, you know, what's all the whining about from Indiana fans? Winning is hard in the Big Ten, and it is hard. I mean, that that Ohio State team went from looking like maybe a national championship contender early in November to being a team that lost to Wisconsin on its home floor. So, you know, college college kids are funky and, and kind of, you know, moody, and you never know what you're going to get from one night to the next, and that's what you got with Ohio State. You don't know which version of the Wessons is going to show up or C.J. Walker, and but if they come together and they find a collective energy, Indiana's going to have its hands full. Yeah, and I'd imagine they'll find their collective energy for this game because that's IU's luck this year. Well, and, you know, I know we're going to talk about this, but that game has an opportunity to be of, of some historical importance to both programs because a graduate of Ohio State and a guy who coach Indiana just might be at Assembly Hall for the first time for a game in almost 20 years. Who do you think he'll be cheering for? You know, that's a great question. Where is he going to sit? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, are you, whose bench are you sitting behind? Or where are you going to be, you know, in the arena at, at Assembly Hall? I think that that's, I was thinking about that, you know, because having an idea of what a contrarian he is, uh, you know, going with, going with the school, wearing an Ohio State hoodie, that would be that would be something that would not surprise me terribly if, if this was the Bob Knight that we we knew five years ago. I, I don't think that he's going to do that kind of thing. I'm not, but you know, who knows with with Bob Knight? Now, what are the chances he shows up? Is this just a rumor? Or? Pretty good. Yeah, it's a, there's a pretty good chance. This I'll, I'll tell you this because this is what we do, but I haven't written this. I know that the decision is actually Karen Knight's, and Karen is very protective of Bob Knight and wants to make sure that if they do this, that it's going to be a positive experience. And so there's some people talking to Karen, trying to make sure, trying to kind of allay her fears that he's going to be well-treated at the game if they do go to the game and and so that decision is going to be made tomorrow and uh you know i'll know in advance and i don't know i guess i'll tweet it but uh it, it could go either way at this point but it's a legitimate like the rumor is legitimate there's a really good chance that bob knight's going to go to that game and it just kind of depends upon what karen's feeling is about how he's going to be treated during that kind of that it, she's very protective of him and wants to make sure he's well treated by the fans, by the administration, by everybody. And so that's kind of where we are. I couldn't imagine him not be being treated well. Well, you know what? There's the political thing. And, and so, I mean, it, it, Donald Trump was coming to Indiana and saying that part of the reason that he ran for president was that Bob Knight called him and said that he should. 
And and so you've got kind of that political wild card in the deck where maybe, you know, there are going to be students at IU who are not going to respond well or respectfully with uh, if Coach Knight shows up at Assembly Hall. But hopefully, you know, uh, other people would understand just what he's meant to that program and not define Bob Knight by his behavior, which occasionally was a little bit aberrant when he was the head coach. And he did things to amuse himself that weren't amusing to others. And, uh, you know, there was the 30 for 30 uh, last year or two years ago uh, that showed some of that. But, uh, you know, I think it's time that that we remember that because of Bob Knight, there are a whole bunch of people in the state of Indiana who know a hell of a lot more about basketball than they would have otherwise. And because they know a lot more about basketball, they kind of understand how basketball is a corollary for life in a lot of ways. And, and so we, we have some wisdom about our existence and how we ought to behave in our community because of Bob Knight that wouldn't be there without him. So, yeah, I, I still couldn't imagine anybody not cheering for him, especially in Indiana. It's not like he's going to Cal Berkeley to watch a game, Kent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. But yeah. you know what? I, I don't know. Trump did you know, win Indiana by a pretty large margin. Yeah, you, you don't want people using this as an opportunity to go out and pick it and, you know, set up a, what they have. When I was there, and apartheid was a big deal. You had kind of a shanty town outside the, outside the union where people were protesting apartheid and good for them for doing it. But, you know, college students, they have a lot of energy and a lot of time on their hands, and who knows – what they would do as far as kind of utilizing that opportunity to draw attention to themselves or their causes. But hopefully, you know, if he does go and he walks out of that tunnel, people are respectful and they show him at least one time, like a a unanimous kind of showing of, of admiration and gratitude for what he did at Indiana, because most of what he did at Indiana was very, very positive and I think really, if you went to if you went to school at IU during Bob Knight's kind of reign, his era, you learned a lot about things and a lot about accountability from Bob Knight, who is, you know, he taught that class, although people taught it for him more often than not. Um, we learned a lot at Indiana again about basketball and life because of Bob Knight, and so I, you know, I to me, I think he was. The, the, kind of in absentia because I never, I never met the man while I was there, but I learned a hell of a lot. I probably learned more from Bob Knight about life and basketball than I learned from any other professor at IU about any subject. Yeah, and you were there for a long time, so there was a lot of people. I was there for quite. Yeah. Yeah. You just graduated two years ago. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I was almost there for two national championships. If I just could have got my parents to pop for a seventh year. I'd have been there in 87, too. Well, what kind of pressure would this put on Archie Miller? Does this magnify it even more, or does it take some off because everybody's paying attention to Coach Knight? Oh, I think we lost Kent. There you are. There now you are. Back. So I lost does, you for a minute. Sorry about what that. What does this do for Coach Miller if he's coaching at this game? Is it more pressure on him then? I don't, I don't know how the pressure could be any greater. That, that's a good question, though. I, it, I, I think finally, last night, it kind of dawned on Archie that he's the coach of this team, and, and it's not those guys. And I hate the picture that I saw on Twitter where you've got everybody off the bench applauding except for Devontae Green hmm. and Deron Davis. Yeah. I hate that. You, you got to get your ass up and support your teammates, and if you're not going to be supportive of your teammates, again – Get on a bus and go do something else. Because if you're if you don't have the the wisdom and and kind of the philosophical balance to be supportive of the guys you're going to war with, then the hell with you. I just don't get it. And hopefully Archie's figured that out and he's going to kind of dance with the the players that brung him and understand that energy is important and a collective energy is really important. And so reward those guys who bring it. Now, I don't care if it's Cooper Bybee, for God's sake. Put people on the floor who give a damn about Indiana basketball and are going to go to war with their kind of their teammates and and see what happens. I'm tired of watching guys who are self-motivated and only in it for their own glory 
I'm tired of that. I don't want to see it anymore. And if it means skinning the rotation, please do that. Yeah, and I think maybe we're seeing that. Devontae only played 20 minutes. Yeah, I'm hoping. You know, I'm hoping that Archie's got the got the stones. Yeah, I, I don't know what what the thing is that keeps a guy from doing it. Maybe it's recruiting. This had hurt recruiting that a guy came in with a pedigree and all of a sudden, you know, he's sitting on the bench. And so it's it, you get recruited against by coaches who say, look at the way they treated Devontae Green. I don't know. But I like let's let's get down to business, the business of putting the guys on the floor who give a damn about that program and about the state and about the university and about, most importantly, their teammates. Yeah. And what do you think? Does Indiana beat Ohio State? No. No, I can't possibly. I, I You know, a couple of days ago when uh, Indiana was listed as a 12-and-a-half-point favorite, if I were a gambling man, I, and I, I kind of kick myself for not being sometimes – like, there was no way Indiana was going to win that game by 12 and a half. Um, and it wound up being 14. This, I, uh, I, I just don't see Indiana. I, what a pivot that would be, right? I mean, to go from being a team that was down to Northwestern by 10 about midway through the second half last night to being a team that could beat Ohio State, uh, I, I just don't see it. I, I, I can't imagine that being the outcome. But you know, we'll watch on Saturday, and, and hopefully we're hopefully I'm surprised. I'm speaking for myself. You, you tend to be an eternal optimist, so I'm sure you've got actually. Winner. I'm nowhere near an eternal optimist. I just didn't think Maryland was as good as people thought they were before. <laughs> and I, I think this in my head, I'm picking Indiana because I imagine Bob Knight walking out to a standing ovation, walking over, hugging Archie Miller. Some of it rubs off, and then IU never loses again. You know, it, 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 and you say that you're not an eternal optimist. Okay, you're a selective optimist. Yeah, but if it uh, has to do with Bob Knight. Yeah. <laughs> I I wonder, like those players, there isn't a single one of those players who has any cognitive memory whatsoever of Bob Knight being the head coach at Indiana. So I think more or less, it's kind of meaningless to them. But to the fans, it's not going to be. And I would imagine that the roof will come off that place and maybe some of that energy pours into Indiana and and those guys come out kind of with their hair on fire because they're going to have to. Yeah, and they're going to come out. They're going to get a 20-point lead in the first 10 minutes. And then they're not going to score again and lose by 35. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe Bob Knight being in the house kind of widens that rim and, and all of a sudden the guys who've been missing a lot of shots somehow make a bunch of shots. Yeah. Well, hopefully. Um, since you're in the Keys, will you be back on Saturday or? No, so no, but I'll be watching. Okay. Do we want to do the show Monday or did you want to do it Saturday yeah. after the game? Or Monday's perfect. All right. That Saturday way after the game, I'll be. If Indiana wins, I'll be in no condition to do the show. And if Indiana loses, I'll Wait, be in Kent, no condition to do the show. It'll be like two o'clock when the game ends. What are you doing well, in the Keys? We're getting right, we're getting after it early. The, okay. the bars open up really, really early. Oh, yeah, because you get older and you're going to go to sleep at like 7 or 8 anyways, right? <laughs> so that makes it just like it's 8 o'clock at night when you were younger. It is. It's kind of like the, the, the Key West is sort of like the MCL cafeteria of, of Florida where everybody gets after it early. And then, you know, like 5 in the afternoon, they're like, whoop, that, that wasn't a good idea. You know, so, those 20-hour uh, marathons, they're, they're a thing of the past, so – I think we'll have to adjust our clocks so what's accordingly. What's the temperature in Key West right now? Oh God, it's a it's a beautiful seventy-two. I'm our hotel is right across the street from the Ernest Hemingway House, where he wrote a bunch of stuff. And so people people in line to get in are kind of they're baffled by my uh, my conversation with you about Indiana basketball. But the hell with them. Well, do, I, do I they know the that you just like Hemingway have written your own book? <laughs> you know what? I should have brought a copy. You should have. And as we're, as we're on the tour, I, I could lay it on uh, Hemingway's desk, and maybe they would think that it's you know some kind of artifact yeah. from his time. Maybe here. next year you could go down across from Hemingway, <laughs> sit outside, and write, oops, too. <laughs> I'll, I'll put up a, yeah, we'll do a signing out in front of Hemingway's house. Yeah. I'll get a card table and a chair and, hey, who wants to buy a book? Yeah, Ernest Hemingway, <laughs> Kent Sterling, same damn thing. <laughs> it's a book. Uh, exactly. All right. I, I self-published it, so I should have. I should have claimed it was written by Ernest Hemingway. Well, see, Ernest Hemingway would have self-published if they'd have had an Amazon creative space back then. 
you know, there's no doubt about that. He was quite an entrepreneur. And yeah. <laughs> evidently, everything I've read about the guy, he was the king of getting to the bars early and, uh, and, and then staying out as long as he wanted to. He lived quite a life. Yes, he did. That's why he didn't live quite a long life. Yeah. Yeah, sad. But you know what? All things in moderation, Mike. And being down in Key West, we're, we're going to take it one step at a time, and uh, we'll see how long we last on Friday. I think it's going to be a long night. I think my wife's energy is going to pull me through. Yeah, it's going to have to probably as old as you're getting. <laughs> but all right, we are going to go ahead and wrap it up. Tell everybody where they can buy Oops, which is a lot of people I saw reviews comparing you to Hemingway. Well, and they're so nice, very generous with their reviews at Amazon.com. If you if you search Oops and Sterling or Kent Sterling, it, you find the book, and uh, it's in its second printing, so that's very nice, very validating. I, I appreciate everybody uh, lining up to buy kind of 37 stories of my own uh, my own mistakes. Hopefully, I make a couple while I'm down here, and then you can go to KentSterling.com and uh, read what I. Uh, what I wrote is kind of a, uh, a fictional conversation between Archie Miller and Bob Knight uh, that would have occurred after the Maryland game had I been Archie Miller. I would have gone over to Knight's house and said, please, coach, help. What can I do? You think Knight would let him in? I do. Okay. You know what? Bob Knight, seriously, the guy, the number of times I've heard stories of conversations between he and Claire B., and Pete Newell and Henry Iba and, and all the great coaches from the, that previous generation tonight, he loved those guys and enjoyed getting wisdom from them. And I think he would, he would really appreciate the opportunity to share his. And do you know, I found this out first, firsthand, not from Bob, but from somebody very close to him, that coaches, they never do that. And he would love for coaches to come to Bloomington and sit and talk basketball, but nobody calls. And I think that's a shame because I think he, he has a lot to share. Yeah, most definitely. All right, guys, make sure. What's your Twitter handle? handle? Well, it's at Ken Sterling. <laughs> we, we don't get creative oh, with, know. you know, like for the win or, you know, with numbers and whatnot or, any, <laughs> you know, assembly call. Love those guys. I just call me me yeah. at Ken Sterling. So and you can reach me at Grueling Truth. Um, nice. All right, guys, we're going to have to go because I'm about to blow my nose or I'm going to start coughing constantly because I've been sick all week, Kent. So we are going to wrap it up. We will be back Monday to talk about the Hoosiers' riveting win over the Ohio State Buckeyes. I'm picking it here. I'm picking it now, 72 to 55. <laughs> so we'll be wow, by 17. We'll be back. My, it'll be close until the end when Devontae Green <laughs> decides since Bob Knight touched him, that he will play team basketball and lead the Hoosiers to a riveting victory. I love it. All right. 72-55, IU over Ohio State. We'll talk all about it on Monday, or we'll talk about something completely different that happened, which is probably what will happen. But make sure you check back with us Monday, and you can hear all of our shows on pretty much any podcasting platform there is. Just type in The Grueling Truth. So for Kit Sterling, I'm Mike Goodpastor. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.